The Strain, Season 3, Episode 3, Firstborn. Now, this episode, I'm not only late seeing, but I'm also <laughs> super late reviewing because I actually watched this, um, I think I saw it sometime last week, but I got super busy. Um, I'm in a new area, some of you guys might know that. But um, I was helping my girlfriend move, so I didn't even review this episode. And then I realized that as I was, just before I watched um, not even the most recent episode, the one after this, I was like, oh crap, I didn't even review this one. So here I am reviewing this, and then I'm going to go right into reviewing the other one because I just had, I just ended up watching it anyway. But I really enjoyed this episode. Not only did we get to see, um, in a way, it was a successful plan. Like, in one regard, it did work. I was completely surprised. I mean, they honestly, they came out of it alive. That in itself really shocked me. I didn't really think that, you know, of course I didn't think F would die, but for Quinlan, it was like, Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't, I didn't exactly know, because I, I kind of had that idea with the guys Gus was working with in the first season, or, yeah, I think it was the very first season, where they came into play, and I was like, oh, they're going to be really big players, and they actually died off fairly early, I was really surprised, I thought they were going to be in the series for quite a while, and they died in the last season, and I don't think it was even halfway through the second season, and they ended up being killed off, and that really surprised me, so I was like, I don't really know exactly, you know, how attached I should be to this character. I don't know if he'll ever die. But we got a lot about him in this episode. We learned a lot about his character. We got to see the whole history of him being like a sideshow and everything. And this woman kind of adopting him from this sideshow and um, teaching him control. Teaching him, really teaching him how to be the human half, you know, that he actually has within him. So I thought that was pretty cool. We got to learn about his name, which I believe was originally like Quintus, because it was, I think Quintus was four, I believe, or something like that. So he's like either the fourth or fifth child that was born. So I thought it was cool. We got, you know, the history of his name. We got to actually see his history and exactly how he was raised and how he was, well, not even raised, but how he was trained to be more human and how to really obey the thirst that he would have like other Strigoi. And so we see, like, his first battle with them and stuff, which was insane when he, like, ripped the one... I think he, like, ripped his eyeballs out or something crazy, or, like, he pulled his throat out, something crazy like that. And it was just super gory. I think it was that he, like, stabbed his eyes. And he did it, like, just with his fingers. It wasn't like he used his thumbs. It was, like, about as visual as it could be. And he stuck his thumb, like, in his mouth and was just moving it around. I was like, that's super gross, but it's also kind of cool. And we got to see his first battle, um which is more of a mental thing, and then it became uh, a small physical battle uh, with the Master in the past. And I enjoyed that. I thought it was really good. It's like, you know, I'm not going to fight you and stuff like that. It's like, you know, no, you know, we, we'll fight at some point, but for now, I'm going to test you, and I will see which side of you is stronger, like, you know, my side of you or the human side of you. And, of course, it led to uh, Quinlan having to kill the woman that he called Mother, and that really sucked, and that was the only way that he could survive, and she knew that, and she knew that she was dying anyway, because uh, they'd been in there, that, you know, they had no food and no water, so it, it was pretty much all that could be done, and so he had to do that, and of course it sent him into a bit of a fury, but of course he ends up escaping, and, you know, that leads to the present timeline, where he decides he'll team up with F, and they'll not only get F's son back, but they will also take out the Master, as well as keep the Lumen, you know, for themselves, and... You know, like I said, in a sense, it was successful because they kind of got him, but it, it was obvious, you know, that they didn't kill him because, like, oh, there's this giant worm. Something, you know, he's going to get a new body. Like, that was the first thing I said. I was like, oh, that kind of sucks because that just means he'll get a new body. And I wasn't sure if anyone saw it or not because they were all, seemed like they kind of were looking at each other like, holy crap, it, you know, it worked. But um, I, I liked it. I, I thought it was really cool, and it was just like, oh, that was still you know somewhat successful but at the same time not so much and of course they don't get Zack back and I knew that was gonna happen as soon as anyone is supposed there's supposed to be some sort of trade in any series where there's supernatural creatures it's automatic if there is a bag over somebody's head it's either not that person or they've been killed or turned that is every time there's a hostage situation it's always like this, like, yep, this is them, and then they rip the bag off and push him at the person to try to, you know, get everybody on the opposite side killed off. And that's, of course, what happens. It's not Zack, and it's some, it's one of the kids. And, as always, love seeing them, because they always, they're 
creepy, but they always, you know, cause a pretty cool little fight scene. And F held his own in that one, I gotta be honest. He was barely making it, but he was, like, using the lumen to his advantage because it's, you know, um, you know, it's full, made of silver and stuff. I was like, that's pretty cool. I, I appreciate that. I, I think it's really cool. So it was a nice little fight there. Of course, he ends up surviving. Um, if I remember right, he, like, knocked Kelly out, or he at least got a hit in on her or something like that. So I was like, all right, that's pretty cool, too. But I, I enjoyed it. I, I liked the fight scene. Um, Quinlan's scene was really crazy. He comes in with, you know, the machine guns, and that was awesome. I, I really enjoyed that part. And then he actually has to deal with the military guys when uh, they end up showing up, which I thought was cool, too. And this is an element I don't think I'd ever really considered before with the characters that they take over certain people but they retain certain elements because really they didn't need those specific guys to use the machine guns i would assume that um you know like the master could control them but maybe they were given that little bit of freedom um kind of like kelly and i course just not as much and so they were able to maintain those skills and i think that's how that operates but i don't think i ever really considered that before like oh yeah if they took out cops or military people if the master didn't take them over too much they'd actually still maintain certain parts of themselves because the master might you know despite being centuries old the master might not exactly have military training you know like a group of people so the master still controls them but it's like yeah you go ahead and you maintain control of your reflexes and your skills and all of that stuff but you look super gross and, you know, mentally, I control you. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's something, and I'm sure they've done that, and maybe I just forgot, because I always forget a bunch of stuff once the new season starts. Like, oh, it's been forever um, since the last season. But I thought that was cool. I was like, that's a nice little element. And then they come in, and they're just shooting the crap out of Quinlan. But he made it through, and he does the decapitation and everything. And I was like, wow, that was an oddly successful, or, like, seemingly successful mission I mean neither of them died and you know like I said they don't actually get Zack and technically they don't actually kill the master but they didn't die either so it went way better than I expected I mean Quinlan did get shot up but he survives um so you know it was like wow I immediately didn't expect that and then we also get to see a bit more of Gus in this episode and we also get uh Angel which was pretty cool I was waiting for him to come back so we get to see both of them and Things get really crazy with them. Like, it starts off kind of simple, and Angel comes in and is like, man, this is crazy and stuff, and, you know, he's basically like, you know, you can't even stand up to me because you're, you know, using so much blood to try to feed her. You, you know, you might get yourself killed. If you don't get yourself killed out there, then you'll get yourself killed, you know, in here, because which almost happens, because as soon as Angel knocks on the door, he's like, hey, you know, hold on, and he's trying to rush, and he falls because he's constantly taking all of his blood. So, they have their little argument and stuff, and Angel decides to help Garth, and the way they did the scene, I really enjoyed. Them going through uh, the apartment building, it's like, they're about to get out, and then they have this random dude, and of course, you know, they find his mom, and it got really nuts. Like, honestly, I wasn't expecting it to be that way. I thought, I get that it's his mother, but he's like flat out murdering a bunch of innocent dudes, and I was like, I don't think I'm on his side on this one and I, I can't remember if Angel actually ended up killing him when he fought back but like Gus was just flat out like shooting he shot like one of those guys because like he used the gun on him and I was like man he flat out like murdered a couple of the, a couple of these cops and I was like I don't know if I'm on his side on this one like I, I I of course I'm not exactly I don't exactly get where he's coming from but I do a little bit and of course he, you know they were doing the clean and sweep stuff so you had to get him out of there and it was nuts it was just crazy. I was like, wow, they, like, actually killed a couple of these innocent people. Um, and I guess Angel did help because he was the one that, like, cut her loose. And then, you know, um, Gus rips the helmet off because so, they know what's going to happen if she gets loose. She's going to kill this dude. So they were both responsible for that. And they did kill a few innocent people. And I was like, man, that is kind of a dick move. I don't know if I was kind of on their side. Like, Gus, I kind of, you know... A minor, a very minor pass because he's in that in that zone. But for Angel to just agree to do that was like, oh, that's that's a bit much. I mean, they would have probably beat Gus up, but they wouldn't have killed him. Maybe I don't know. Um, but that was a crazy moment. And it's like, wow, they killed a couple innocent cops. Um, I honestly can't even remember exactly what happened with his mom. 
to, if I'm being totally honest. I don't remember if they actually got her or not. But I know they get arrested. So they get taken out. They get just destroyed. They just beat the crap out of them. And then they take them to what is like the new prison system, which is basically, oh, you've committed a crime. Now you're going to go clean out these creatures, which is insane. It's almost pointless, to be totally honest. I mean, if anything, they're just making this Dragoy stronger by sending in random people. Like Gus and Angel, that's a, a very rare exception. But for most of those people in there who were chosen for what you know, whatever random crimes, if they're making prisoners go out to fight the Strigoi, they're going to get decimated. Like, there's just nothing. I mean, they don't have, you know, all, well, actually, you know, they may or may not, I would assume if they're sending out prisoners, they aren't wasting, you know, the equipment and stuff on them and giving them, like, all the best stuff because otherwise they would just send the cops in. But it was just crazy when there's like, oh, yeah, you guys are going to be going out. And it's like, all right, I'm excited to see that. Um, of course, you know, Gus and Angel, I'm sure, will be fine, but just that whole idea is very interesting. Like, man, that's a, it's a very, t I, I understand what they're doing. It's like, we don't want to use all our cops and get them all killed off, so we use a bunch of, cr you know, criminals and stuff. It's like, at the same time, they, at this point, they should know how it operates. If someone gets, you know, infected or, you know, the, you know, a tendril shoots out and hits you in the neck or wherever, you're done. Like, you become one of them, and now that's just another person to help the enemy take over the city. And they're just sending in random people, and it's just like, that's a stupid idea. It's a great concept. I love the idea of it, just watching it. But in actuality, that's such a stupid idea. It got, like, incredibly dark just now. But, you know, I thought that was cool. I was like, alright, I'm excited to see where that goes. But it, it was really crazy. I was just like, that's a terrible idea. Ultimately, great episode. It's getting like pitch black now because the clouds are getting super thick over the sun. Um, but it was a fun episode. I, I really enjoyed it. I was pleasantly surprised, of course, by the main mission. I had no idea it would go as well as it did, although technically they still failed. It did actually end up working. I'm going to have to fly out, turn the light on now. Okay, that was really weird. I didn't think it would get incredibly dark like that. But I enjoyed the episode, like I said. I'm excited to see, um, well, technically I've seen it already, but I'm excited to see where they take this sort of prison thing and what they do with the Master being in this new mode. Because I would assume it's not going to be, you know, the next episode it would kind of be pointless if the Master just took over a new body automatically. It would kind of get rid of that concept. So I'm, you know, I I'm kind of excited to really talk about uh, since I've seen the next episode already, what's going to be happening. But, of course, I want to know what you guys thought about this one, so please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, these favorite parts. And despite this episode being old, I still want to ask, with the mission at least somewhat going a bit successful, even though they didn't actually kill the Master completely, I want to know what you guys are, um, how you guys were feeling once that happened. Like, even though... Especially the first decapitation, it was just like, holy crap, they killed the master. And then they showed the worm, and I was like, oh, not really. So I was a little upset when that happened. I was kind of sad because if they actually killed the master, I was super excited to see where they were going to take this story. Like, whoa, the master's, like, dead. But, of course, they still have Strigoi, so no one can be taken over. You know, how is that really going to play out? And you have characters like Ihorse and Kelly. What's going to happen with them? Will they revert, or will they stay where they are? you know, what's going to happen there. So I want to know what you guys thought about watching the Master actually get decapitated. And with that happening, that means we're going to be getting a new actor. So I'm curious to see if that's going to be like someone who's famous or something. And, you know, that's... I'm assuming, you know, they're following the comic story, so that was meant to happen no matter what. But we did still have the same actor um, who was like the um, Boulevard Trap. No, that's a totally different thing the Trask guy, or, you know, whatever his name was, um, that might have been his name, Bopar Trask, and, you know, we had that same actor, even though he was, like, completely bald and had the makeup and stuff, it was still the same guy, so I'm curious if they're gonna have, like, a famous actor do it and take over, because this is gonna be, like, you know, the new version of the Master, maybe we'll get a female version of the Master, because every version we've seen, so far at least, has been male, and it's only been the, you know, the really big dude and, um, the singer, so it's, those are the only two we've technically seen. But it would be cool if we got, like, a female version of the Master. Um, but, you know, like I said, I want to know what you guys thought about watching that decapitation and then seeing that little worm just crawl into the sewer and technically survive, which is 
kind of heartbreaking, but it was still pretty cool because it's it's still a big change where they they made a big move against the master, and I have to see where it goes, but. Definitely want to know what you guys thought about that and the episode in general, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.